Vice President Harris called these, quote, atrocities of unimaginable uh, proportions, but she deferred to the UN on whether they're war crimes. I mean, what else could they be? They are clearly targeting civilians. I think the time has arrived where our officials can use the term atrocity crimes more liberally. They don't have to say war crimes. They don't have to say crimes against humanity, genocide. These are all atrocity crimes. The day will come when we define whether or not it's specifically a war crime or a crime against humanity. All of them have different standards of proof and evidence, intention, who actually commits these crimes, at what level of command uh, are these crimes uh, uh, orchestrated. But the point is atrocity crimes have arrived in Ukraine, and that is undeniable. And I think the time really has come for U.S. officials now to sort of use that term. They've, they've said aggression. They've said investigation of war crimes. They've said atrocities of, uh, of intolerable Unimaginable significance. proportions, yeah. Um, yeah. And so, really, the, the vernacular is out there. The terminology is out there. But I think it's, it, it would just be more clarifying for people simply to say atrocity crimes are occurring. It is essential to prevent them being, from being further committed, and it's also essential for those who have committed them to be punished. So Putin has done this, the Russians have done this for, for years, targeting hospitals. Uh, we saw it uh, in Syria. You heard my, my introduction to the piece, to Phil's piece. Um, one New York Times investigation found four hospitals targeted in just 12 hours. Mm -hmm. um, and this is not this Mariupol maternity and children's hospital. It's not even the first Ukrainian hospital in the last two weeks. Mm -hmm. Why does he do this? Well, I think he does it first and foremost to terrorize the population, to incentivize them to flee as refugees. His tactic was the same in Syria with Assad. You terrorize the civilian population to leave the civilian populated areas. Then you level those areas. You reclaim your authority over those areas. And perhaps someday some of those individuals return, but they return under your subjugation. So that's a clear tactic. It is one that is completely oblivious to any consideration of the legality or illegality of the tactic. But it certainly is playing out here. And I might add, Jake, that, you know, President Putin has demonstrated that he knows what is occurring in Ukraine. He's not ignorant of it. He obviously knows. As the top leader, he has the responsibility to prevent those crimes from occurring or, and, or to punish those who have committed them if he wasn't able to prevent them. He's clearly doing neither. So he's incriminating himself every single day mm -hmm. as the top commander. That means that when he's indicted by the International Criminal Court, and I think that will occur within two to three months, mm -hmm. his is an easier indictment to draft than what we've had in the past where you don't sometimes know whether the top leader actually is aware of the actual crimes be, uh, occurring. Uh, they don't make public statements about it. They don't advertise themselves as orchestrating the crimes, of orchestrating the, uh, the invasion. Right. But Putin has done so. One other note about the creating refugees, uh, as I, I just know from military sources, that Putin loves creating instability in Europe by creating these refugee crises that cause uh, all sorts of uh, political issues yeah. as well as financial issues. Uh, lastly, what do you say to somebody who says, okay, uh, Russia gets, uh, Putin gets indicted by the International Criminal Court? Russia's not a member of the International Criminal Court, and the United States isn't either, either for that matter. So what? What does that mean? The answer is it doesn't matter. The International Criminal Court has full jurisdiction over Ukraine in this matter for the investigation. 39 countries referred it to the ICC legitimately. When he's indicted, and when the generals are indicted, the sanctions that have been imposed upon Russia, the most severe in history, will not be lifted until two things happen. One, the Russian military withdraws from the Ukraine and the Ukraine restores its territorial integrity and sovereignty. And two, Putin and the indicted generals, the indicted fugitives from justice, are surrendered to The Hague. It would be implausible for the sanctions to be lifted until that happens. This is exactly what we did in the Balkans with Milosevic, Karadzic, Mladic. We kept the sanctions on Serbia until they were surrendered. And I see no basis to think that European countries or even the United States, Canada, will tolerate them not being surrendered. Um, those sanctions will, will stay in place until they are surrendered.